be something an intern could do. Um, I disagreed with that for a couple of reasons, mainly that, you know, interns are sort of temporary. So do you want to retrain someone to do a super important job every six months or do you just have like a main point person that's always going to be someone to review these things? So as Tim was saying, like we like here at Scribe have that um, as sort of our rule, like we have these, you know, like, for example, I, I can QC uh, compositions because I've been working on them uh, for a while. Um, and then, you know, I'll eventually hop in, but I'm sort of a backup. We have like this main person who we send um, our stuff to so that they can, you know, take a look and they're able to better catch errors because they've seen like, you know, they, they already know where to look for uh, certain things. Um, so we're just going to hop right in. But before we do, does anybody have any questions? Okay. I, I see that comment from Richard uh, where he's commenting on proofreading in QC. And we're actually going to talk about a little bit about um, copy editing and proofreading later on um, in the second and third hour. Um, but um, at this point, Right, QC is this big important thing because it helps us catch the errors that often prove to add a lot of time and a lot of essentially money, right, to any project. Um, you know, it's better to catch things early on where you can still fix them. Um, it's sort of the reason why we do things in the Wellform document workflow the way that we do. Um, we do things in like these specific, like we compose. We're not composing and editing at the same time. So that way we know that, hey, this is now perfect. I can move on to the next uh, stage. And that's how it sort of all fits together um, and why quality control is important at each and every step um, and at least at um, every major change. You know, we are not putting that as a rule in, in anything that we do, but it is a good guideline that has often saved us uh, from, um, you know, some big things that we could have um, like really royally messed up. So, um, so I'm gonna um, actually share my screen uh, so that we can get into the actual QC uh, procedure. I'll be making stops just to, um, you know, at, let you guys ask questions. Uh, feel free to, you know, put something in the chat if I can't answer it right away. Uh, Tim will, um, will be answering um, and he'll be taking a look at the chat while uh, we're going through this. But does everybody get the idea of the big picture of why QC is, is important or quality control? We'll be referring to it as QC from now on. I think we're good. Yes, good, great. Okay, so I'll be sharing my screen here. And so I've also um, gone ahead um, and shared on the composition module, there is um, the OTN um, demo uh, redo comp uh, dot, uh, docx file. And that file is um, the file that has already gone through the refine. Remember, that's what we did um, last time. But just as a, a little bit of a refresher, um, when we compose a file, we're composing in these broad strokes. We're going through marking elements as they need to be um, need to be marked as they are, um, as what their structure indicates they should be. Um, and then after we have gone and composed through those broad strokes, we upload to the hub and the hub um, has the refiner tool, which allows us to then, um, you know, deal with articulation um, and composing, for example, of those P uh, standard paragraph elements um, in an automatic way, right? Um, in our conversation uh, with Kathy um, last week, uh, we were talking about that, like how we are not supposed to just go through and, you know, mark everything as P. You can leave things as normal uh, because the refiner is there to help you, you know, um, do that automatically because it, it is tedious, right? It's easy to do, um, you know, on a six page, you know, training document. Um, but when you have a 600 page book going through and marking every thing as P is going to be, uh, mind numbing to say the least. Um, so, um, again, the idea is you compose as, as we've gone over the last couple of weeks, you compose the file, make sure that, um, you know, you go through, um, the checks that we've placed there, um, in the composition module and then get to that step where you are refining the document, uploading it to the hub, running the refiner, and then downloading that file so that you can see what the refiner has done. Um, and so I'll go ahead and share my screen now with that refined document. Okay. 
And again, just as a review and just to make sure we are all caught up because I know it's been two weeks um, and a lot of information tends to leak uh, during those two weeks, uh, two week time. Um, we're, we always work in draft view so that we're able to see how things are uh, structured, how they're currently composed, right? And we're just going to scan through this document. Um, this is already um, pulled from the hub. If you want to follow along um, with the um, QC procedure, you can do it with the file that you've already gone through um, with the refiner if you got that green middle circle at the end of our class. Um, or you can feel free to download um, this file from the sample file section of the composition module. So Tim will go ahead and share that uh, file name there. It should be, just wanted to make sure. Let's bring that up. <laughs> yeah, oh, so the, the, the in-between file, right? Right. Well, uh, right now we're looking at the already refined file. So the training file. That. No, it's okay. So the training file is the one that was in between right before um, we we left um, and before we got to the refiner. So that was the file that we left in between, right? Hence the name. Um, and so here I've already given you the, the name for uh, the composed file. And you'll see that it has a little um, annotation next to it that just says composed file. So again, if you've already gone through the refiner and you have that training document that we were working on um, and you'd like to use that for um, the QC, you're more than welcome to. Um, but if, for example, you're like, okay, I just want to, you know, learn what this whole QC thing is about, you're also welcome to download this file um, so that you can follow along here with us. And so here, we're going to go through and we're just looking at the file. Um, it's always good once you download a file from the refiner. The refiner does a very good job of doing things automatically. Um, but again, it is, you know, a tool. It is not like the be all end all and it's not an AI or anything like that. Um, so um, it's always good to check the file um, to make sure that things are composed the way that you want them to. Um, and sometimes, right, well, when we upload something to the refiner, like for example, we forgot to mark, you know, a block quote as, you know, BQ while we were composing. Um, and what ended up happening is, is that the hub treated that like a normal paragraph and just called it P, it reduced it down to P. It will do that um, as its default action. So you always want to check your file to make sure that things are composed as you want them. You can relatively trust the hub, but it's always good to check things. Um, that never hurts, and it's always uh, a good investment of time. So we're going through here, and we're going to just go through. We have our copyright page composed with CRT styles, and here we have our Library of Congress um, data composed as CIP for catalog in publication um, style. And here I'm just going to speed up a little bit just so that we don't take too much time as we've already gone over this. Um, but you have uh, the introductory section of the chapter. Forgive me because this is still in Latin. We haven't gone through and made the English one, but we will make the English one. right? So we'll go through. And we're looking here and you see that the hub made this, which we left as normal. Um, it made it into a P and then it applied the articulation. Um, and by articulation, I mean um, adding those spacing distinctions. Um, and it made it PF for the first paragraph in a chapter. As you can see, no paragraph uh, before it, right? And so here we have our NLs. And actually here I can see something interesting like this here should be NLF, so it's always good to um, to check, right? And so we're just going to go ahead and make that NLF, right? So I'm going to go here to the SAI, and this is just okay. So Sophie um, actually is bringing up a, a good question, uh, which I'll address once we go through this um, um, this document here. So we're going to just go ahead and apply the first style here. We're going to use our style galleries. Um, I've actually created a style gallery just for numbered lists because they come off up so often. So I'll have that here. Um, again, remember you can also um, load the default galleries, which are here, and you have numbered lists available there as well, right? So, um, but I'm going to go ahead and use the one I created. 
There you go. And then I'm going to apply the numbered list uh, first uh, style here. See, go ahead and click on that. And that uh, applied the NLF style here as it needed to be. And so we continue. And again, here, we didn't do a little bit of articulation. So that should be NLL. We're going to go ahead, bring up our numbered list again. So remember, SAI, style galleries. And then if you created your own style gallery, it'll display here, numbered list, and then NLL. And that created that spacing distinction. I'm going to go ahead and save that file. And we're going to continue going through. We have our BQS our, for our block quotes. Block quote standalone has space above and space below, and so on and so forth for the rest. So you can see the, the list here. Again, UL uh, needed to have ULF here because it's starting. See, thank you, Sophie, for bringing that up. Um, I'm actually um, noticed it right now that that should be ULF. And so I'm going to go ahead and compose that as ULF. Right. And so I have my unnumbered list style again, style gallery, which I created, UL. And I'm going to go ahead, find the ULF button and click there. And that makes that. And then I'm going to go ahead and compose um, the, this as ULL as well. No, well, actually, that would be wrong. Because I have this, by the way, all I did was hit control. See, see, there you go. Right here, you have the SEC, and this actually controls the spacing above and below. So if I were to add the unnumbered list last, uh, I would actually be creating too much space, right? So again, this is um, a good reason why you should always check your files and you know do so in a careful manner. Again, that's why we don't have EX and LL here. Again, the head controls the space above, so you don't need to add space below. And continuing on, we have our sense lines for poetry. We have a couple equations. These do not need um, 